So as we mentioned on the previous slide, we were using um, a three to one over subscription at the leaf switch, which in this case here is also the top of rack. So that meant 48 ports going into the server cabinet, 48 10 gig ports, and 160 gig of bandwidth as the uplink going to the spine layer. So in the previous slide, what we saw was we uh, we were provisioning at 160 gig of bandwidth by using four ports of 40 gig as the uplink out of the top of rack. Here, we're going to configure it in a different way. Instead of four ports of 40 gig, we also have the option of using 16 ports of 10 gig as the uplink out of the leaf switch. And we can do that without making any changes to hardware other than deploying what you see here in the lower right corner, which is a breakout cable. So the leaf switch still has QSFP optics um, used for the uplink. That's still basically a 40 gig optic. And as you can see next to the cable there, a QSFP optic is basically four parallel lanes of 10 gig. In the previous slide, what we were doing was we were taking those four parallel lanes of 10 gig and the optic was spraying the packets across all four parallel lanes to really make one electrical uh, 40 gig pipe. In this case here, we're not going to spray the packets across all four parallel lanes. We're going to tell the switch that that QSFP is actually four ports of 10 gig. Each parallel lane of 10 gig there is going to be its own interface to the switch and is going to show up, of course, as an interface on the switch and available as a IP routed path for ECMP to make a hashing decision to place flows on any one of those four 10 gig lanes. So when I have four QSFP optics plugged into the switch for the uplink, uh, four times four equals 16. So now there's 16 interfaces or 16 ports, logical ports of 10 gig that go to the spine layer. And I'll need to have that breakout cable that you see there plugged in at one end of the link. I don't need the breakout cable on both the leaf side and the spine side. I just need it on one end, uh, either leaf or spine. And again, you'll want to be cognizant of the optics you're using and the fiber that you have to figure out what kind of distance you'll be able to get from leaf to spine. Um, if you're using QSFP SR optics on OM3 fiber, it's going to be 100 meters, um, but there's a new QSFP enhanced SR optic which can drive the signal 300 meters on OM3 fiber or 400 meters on OM4 fiber. That uh, is the new information that uh, we have just a few days ago. Now, again, with this, I wanted to point out that because the leaf switch has a port count of 16 for its uplink, that means that we can now have a spine that is 16 switches wide because every leaf switch is connected to every spine, or I should say a leaf switch is connected to every spine. And so before, I only had four spine switches because I was using uh, 40 gig. Now I can have 16 spine switches because I have 16 uplinks out of the leaf switch. So now we have to look at what is the port count of the spine switch to determine how wide I can build this cross fabric. So because the spine switch, in this case, the Del Force 10 Z9000 has a port count of 128 10 gig, that means I can have 128 leaf switches and 128 leaf switches times 48 ports each. That's how we get to 6,144 server ports at three to one over subscription. So a uh, point here is that nothing changed in the hardware. We're using the same switches, we're using the same optics. The only thing we did is we introduced the breakout cable and we changed the configuration of our switch to say, treat that QSFP port as four 10 gigs rather than one 40 gig. And that alone allowed us to vastly increase the scalability of this fabric while keeping it at two tier architecture, a leaf and a spine. To get more information about my webinars, to register for an online session, 
or buy a recording or the yearly subscription, please visit my website.